Morning, how are you? I'm fine. Good. in the morning. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're doing. None of us. But come with us anyway. <laughs> come with us and have a good time. Hey folks, and welcome to the Real Angers Fishing Show. And I'm your host, Kevin Brandon. Today's show is going to be pretty cool. We're fly fishing for bottom fish. That's right. Fly fishing at the Channel Islands for rockfish. It's crazy, I know. I ran into a good friend of mine, Mike, and uh, he told me that they do this fly fishing and I wanted to go out and document it and show our viewers what it looks like. Cause even, I don't know what it's gonna look like, but this is a, a great trip with some great people out doing some fly fishing, again, for bottom fish. Hey. We left early morning and as calm as you could hope for, for six anglers and a videographer. We embark on a four hour cruise across the Santa Barbara Channel. Santa Rosie Islands, where are you at? We're at Santa Rosie Islands doing that. Fishing is kind of superstitious, right? Trying to find that right bait. Picking the perfect fly. Did it work before? Will it work again? Getting strapped in, ready for action. Getting strung up, first thing in the morning. It's all part of the excitement. So we got going on here, Mike. Come on, give me something. Uh, nothing yet. First we're going in the water. Bright colors. And we're gonna get it down. We're drifting. That's a sinking line. So everything sinks down. So we're basically using what everybody else uses in two ounces. This is two ounces of line in 30 feet. So the boat's drifting this way. Peeling out line, and we're gonna get down to where the fish are. Hopefully. Michael's a world record International Game Fish Association world record holder on a fly rod with the white sea bass caught in the Channel Islands. Michael's a former president of the Southwest Council, a subset of the parent organization Fly Fishers International. They're the largest organization worldwide that advocates for fly fishing. His current position is special project directors. That entails setting up fishing trips, but he also really loves to get people saltwater fishing. Pretty much advocating to get people away from just fishing in streams and get out and try it in the ocean. Put your line, your line under there. And just strip that right into that bucket. Then it's easier to get it out. Should I reel it or just need to strip it all in? Michael really spends time instructing fly fishermen to this type of fishing. There are some similarities, but there's also a lot of differences. Getting used to the movements, but that's fishing, right? You learn, you explore, you problem solve, but that's what makes it so rewarding. So now you point the rod tip oh, wow. over to him so you nice grab the line. Yeah. That's, that's it. Blue rockfish. That's a blue rockfish. This is his first saltwater fish. First saltwater fish? Yep. First saltwater fish. a new thing that we're trying. Um, usually we fish during the summer months and the fall for bonita and barracuda and calico bass and all those more surface things because everybody always thinks the fly is always on top. And at this time of year, 
November, December, the rockfish come up more into the shallows, as all you conventional guys know. And so we're, with a day like today, with no wind, we can get the flies down 100 feet, 150 feet, and start twitching them and see if we can uh, get some rockfish. So we're, we're experimenting, we're trying a new thing. So we use sinking lines and we go by, fly fishing is kind of weird, we go by grains. So 100 grain is a very light line and we can go all the way up to 1100 grains, which is like casting, you know, a four ounce sinker. Um, these are 600 grain lines and they just, they sink down. They're tungsten impregnated lines and uh, we tie them onto, this is called the running line. That if we were running after tuna, if we were chasing tuna or something, this is what, the other line we cast, this is what lets us fight them. This is what attaches it to the reel. Um, and so that's how we fish them. So right now we're just trying to get deep. Just like conventional fishing, you know, you use, uh, except I don't know conventional reels anymore, but you use a real small reel, you know, because you don't need, you know, your, your gigantic pen two speed to be fishing for trout. So did you stop conventional fishing and pick up, oh, hook up. Yikes. What's your leader line at the end? 20 pound test. How deep are we now? So, so this is called stripping when you're bringing it in this way rather than winding it in. Good old fashioned hand line. Yep. That is what it is. It is hand line. Blue legs. Yeah. That's a blue bass. Or there, a, blue, a blue cod, what do you call those? Blue bass. Blue bass. Is that a hand? Did you do you make your own flies? No, he does. I do make my own flies, but he's the guy with the flies. I did not tie that. So I was asking, did you did you do did you used to fish conventional and then you started fly? Yes, correct. I fished conventional for for many, many years. That's where I started. I think most fly anglers start that way. And uh, then I started fly fishing, just to try it. It's kind of an ultra light kind of thing. And I've never gone, never looked back. And we catch everything on the fly. Tuna, Dorado, Yellowtail. Still haven't caught a bluefin. Um, just all kinds of stuff. The things that we're restricted to is like deep, deep, deep water rock fishing. At, at 400 feet, 600 feet, whatever the limit is allowed, we can't get down that far. Part of it is having a good boat like this one on the tack, that they understand this kind of fishing. So they put us in a position to be able to fish this. A lot of the open parties or other, other charters don't do that kind of thing. Today's episode is brought to you by Maui Gym Sunglasses, Fishing Syndicate Rods, Promar Ahi USA, Anglerware, Channel Island Sport Fishing. Oh, Kevin, that was the keeper. Look at that. There we go. There's a, there's a nice one. Hey, it's a keep. Already. Oh, boy. Lunch. Michael. Dinner. Right at the barbecue. Not that one. That one's too small. Even fly fishermen have to have standards. Oh, uh, that's too small? Yeah. Oh. They know when you fillet them. Is that one of your hands? Less than a taco. That so, is. Yeah, that, that, this is the new fly yeah. so I tied just the other day. Well, it doesn't look like much like that. Let's let's straighten it out. Let's comb out the hair and make it look good. But that's the. Uh, I'm calling that the Halloween crab. I, do, I know it doesn't look like a crab, but it's, it does look like Halloween for sure. It's a little blue. Did I tell you, is that so, how you keep track? Yeah, and then this up here is tens. Oh, nice. So we'll see how many, see how many we get today. See, the nice thing about that is he doesn't have to wind it on the reel. Uh -huh. It's easy to just get that line out again. Yeah, so when I go out, it goes fast. Really fast. I just whip it back and forth and then 
it'll go back down to 100 feet. So by putting it in the stripper bucket, or stripper basket. Yep. And hopefully. You know kind of the depth that you were last. That was at um, probably 80 feet. But this this line that's in here. This is 100 feet. All the way oh, to the yellow. Oh, when you change your the yeah. color? Yeah. That's called, <clears throat> that's backing back here. And that's like the safety valve. You don't really want to be fishing with that because it's very hard to strip. It's real thin nylon. But if you put the line back that you had in there, that was about the same strike zone that the last fish was, right? You yeah, started stripping yeah. it from the same yeah. zone? That was the first thing I did is I looked to see how deep it was, hoping that if I went to that same depth. So just, we're just pulsing them to make it look like it's alive if something goes by. Good. Now this is a fish. Same zone, right? Yeah. You just pulled out just a couple more feet, maybe? Yeah, about 10 more feet. This guy's not happy. Oh, shoot. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's got a good one. Yeah, a big white fish. Oh, maybe not big enough. Ooh, a better, maybe a better white fish. Maybe lunch. Maybe. Very nice. Keeping that one. Uh, is that a keeper, Kevin? Is this a keeper? That's a keeper. Uh, go ahead and keep it. That's okay, cool. let's, yeah. let's keep it. the rock cod family. So now we figured out that we can go fishing in December with a fly rod at the Channel Islands. Let's check in with the fly guy, Kevin. Great name, right? And see what kind of flies he makes for these special kind of trips. Let's go. Good morning. So this right here is my tangle of a fly box. <laughs> I really ought to get a different fly box, but these are flies that uh, most of which have tied. And this includes a lot of uh, flies for calico bass. That one's got a weed guard on it. For these rockfish, we're using some of these with the orange and red patterns. This is one of my go-to flies for out here, and that's tied with neon orange silly legs at the back. When you pull that through the water, they've got great movement. The hot orange eyes. This is some rubbery material that glows in a UV light. Some more of that, and a little bit of tan calf tail or root beer calf tail on the top. If we get into it, if the fish are biting squid, there's a squid pattern tied with uh, some feathers and some rabbit fur around do? the shank of the hook. But I've caught tuna and yellowtail and on that fly right there. The other hot color that sometimes works is this chartreuse. It's on uh, number four hooks usually, jig hooks, regular hooks. It's a red crab kind of a pattern. A tail on it, a silicone tail that, that flutters in the current when you pull it through there. And you can kind of see that iridescent flavor on there, that the little wispy fibers and that, I think, just looks sexy to those fish. So there you go. The fly guy. Today's episode is brought to you by Maui Jim Sunglasses. Fishing Syndicate Rods, Promar Ahi USA, Anglerware, Channel Island Sport Fishing. Today's group was more about camaraderie, just guys hanging out. Not every trip has to be about trophies to be successful. It's being on the water, fellowshipping with friends, catching memories, being at the islands. The thrill of the tug, that's a big part of fishing. Double. See, that's how Kevin is. He's very competitive. Is yeah. He's the only one I know that uses the cut expansion on the water. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, I got a triple. Oh, my God. The thrill of
thrill of the tug. That's what the experience of fishing is mostly about. The experiences here on full display. The kid and all of us exploring, playing, trying some of our favorite tactics, learning some new ones. It's that orange. It'll get you every time. That's the magic color. Oh, Michael's on. Got a four banger going. There it is, another blue bass. Santa Rosa smallmouth. Those are good size. Look at that guy. So you've heard of big eye tuna? These are yeah. small eye tuna. The fish of Santa Rosa Island range between a half a pound all the way up to 10 pounds. Whitefish, kind of like a brook trout. And the blue bass, smaller ones are like a crappie. And the big ones, man, they're more like a smallmouth bass. And these fish tug. That's like the type of I got about three hours. We have something special out here, Michael says. It's just as special as the East Coast fly fishing, but doesn't get enough publicity. He told me, I think anyone should try salt water on the fly. Be on the beach, a trip like this, or offshore chasing tuna, Dorado or yellowtail. And in 2022, he'll be running about a half a dozen trips just like this between Oxnard and San Diego. Mike's setting up for a vermilion. Your strategies, your selection, your determination, your hunches, sometimes it all pays off. Success, bingo, boom, it's thrilling, it's exciting, it's fishing. I'm going to change to a much heavier line. I wanna get really make sure I'm staying down. So which, which, which would this be? Would this, is a a six, this is a 600 grain. That one uh, I was fishing with was a 400. So this will get down a little bit deeper because I'm looking at what Rick's getting and I wanna try for those. This on the bigger fly? Yeah. Bigger fly, heavier line. Got down a little bit further. There it is. Is that a red? Oh yeah. Oh my God, Michael, look at that. Is this what you wanted? Yes, it is. No, that's no sheep Look at Michael. Very nice. A red on the fly. Woohoo! There we go. Here we go, man. That's what we're trying for. Big flies, get down deep. Hold on. Keep it there. No reason to go to the Eastern Sierras. <laughs> now you need to have this on the cover of Western Outdoors. Shoot for that. That's <laughs> what you wanted, and it worked. That is, it works. Just Thank like you, Rick. just the way you drew it up in practice. You think I knew what I was doing? All good things must come to an end, but on the way back, Michael had a special, something a little extra for us. He whipped up a great lunch for us to enjoy on the way back in. Nothing like fresh rockfish that you caught that day in the Channel Islands, at the Channel Islands with some good friends. That's what's fun about fishing, right? You get to go out, meet some new people, see the way that they fish, check out their styles of fishing, enjoy a great lunch on the water, again, and catch those memories. And we got to do that today, but it doesn't get much better than that. A beautiful day in December, what more could you ask for? And again, I'm really excited that I got to document this film. Make sure you join us next time on The Real Langers Fishing Show. Kevin Brannon, let's go.
good fingers. <laughs>